The theme looks pretty good now. Everything is working except for the menus. And I'm talking about the menu drawer as well as the footer, which is also going to contain a menu. As we can see over here, we're using a few items from the menu, which is the privacy policy, refund policy, and terms of services, which Shopify provides as a standard for you. And then we have some links over here as well for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram pages. And then inside of the actual menu, we have the navigation. So we're going to take care of these little animations in the last section of this course. But for now, let's go ahead and take care of this menu drawer. So let's go back inside of our code. And let's actually close some of these and just leave the application.scss. And then let's navigate into our snippets folder and open up the header.liquid. And let's also create a new file in here. And we will call this menu drawer liquid. Now inside of our header file, we actually need to reorganize some of this because we don't need this container div over here. So let's just cut this part over here and we'll remove the last div and let's move this back a little bit. So this button over here is actually part of just the div inner. And now let's go ahead and move it just down above the mini cart. And now inside of here, we can render our menu drawer. Perfect. So let's save this now. And we actually want to add a conditional class to this as well. And we'll just say class equals. And now inside of here, we have already created a hidden class. So we will only display this if the menu drawer function returns false. So basically, if this menu drawer function is false, then this menu drawer will be shown because it's basically going to say that if hidden is true or false. So let's go ahead down and check where we have this menu drawer and what it does. So just so we're at the bottom here, we have this computed method called menu drawer that basically returns our menu state dot hidden. And now we actually need to toggle our menu. So let's go to the top. And for this menu button over here, we can add a click event. And with this click event, we can now say add click equals toggle menu. And now let's see if we have this available to us. And we don't. So we only have toggle mini cart. So let's go ahead and create a toggle menu function. So just underneath the toggle mini cart, let's create a new function called toggle menu and inside of here we will say toggle menu dot open menu and this is coming from our application dot js file so just to refresh our memory let's go back inside of here and we can see that we have this toggle menu object and inside of it we have a function called open menu all right, perfect. So now, whenever we click on the menu button, we should be able to toggle the menu, which is right over here. So we still need to create it. And now is a good time to actually use some of this. We'll come back to this. But for now, let's go inside of the menu drawer file. And we will create a new div with the class name of menu drawer inner. And then inside of this div, we'll create an unordered list with the class name of navigation menu. And that's good. And then just at the bottom, let's create a new div with the class name of footer menu. Because inside of our menu drawer, we also have a small footer menu. And let me just show you how it looks. We can see here once we click the menu button, we also have this footer menu over here for 
just some of the essential items that someone might need when they're looking through your website. And now inside of the footer menu class, we can create another unordered list with a class name of secondary menu. And now what we can do is go inside of our header component here, and we can just copy this for loop. So let's just copy this and go inside of our navigation menu and we can paste it. And let's just format it a little bit so it looks nicer. And what's basically happening here is that we're looping over the link list called main menu, and then we're grabbing all of the links for that. So this one is looping over the main menu, but we can also copy paste the same thing just down here, and we will call that footer links. But for now, let's modify some of this a little bit, because inside of the for loop, we want everything to be an li because we are inside of an unordered list. And so let's just close this down here and we can format this a little bit better. And then inside of the for loop, we're assigning a child list handle and we're grabbing the link that title. And then we're also checking if this child list handle actually exists. And if it's, if it does exist, then we're going to show it over here and loop over all of the child components. If not, we're just simply going to grab the link URL. And let me show you what they mean by child lists. So let's save this for now and we'll go inside of our shop dashboard over here. And inside of navigation, we can see that we have the main menu and the footer menu. So for example, let's go inside of the main menu and what we can do now is we can create a new item just for an example. And for this, we'll just put a placeholder and we can just click add. And so what we can do now is we can add this component to be a child of another link. So see if we hover over like this, we can see that it's going to just change the, the position of it. But if we move in a little bit, this now becomes a child. And we can add a lot of items here like that. So we can basically have two layers of navigation menu. So for this course, we're just going to be using one just for simplicity's sake. But just keep in mind that you can do this as well when you have really complicated navigation menus. So let's delete this for now. And we'll save this. And let's go back. And we actually need to create a footer menu. So I already have a footer menu, but let's go ahead and create a new one just so we can go through all the steps and we'll call this footer two. And for now, let's just click save because we actually don't have the items by default. So let's go inside of our settings here and click on legal and Shopify actually gives you some templates that you can use. So you can just say replace with template and this is for the refund policy, and then you have the privacy policy and terms of service as well. And go ahead and click create boilerplate templates, and that should create the pages for these. So let's close this now. And if you go inside of the footer menu now and click add menu item, you can select privacy policy, and you'll see at the bottom here, there is a policies category. So let's click on that. And we can select privacy policy and click add. And then add another menu item. And this one, we can say refund policy. And inside of the policies, we can say refund. And now let's add the last one, which is going to be terms of service. And also is available to us over here. So select terms of service and hit save. And now we've created another menu. Now inside of our code, let's go ahead and copy all of this. And now let's paste this inside of here. So now we create another menu, but the name is still called main menu. And the one we just created, the handle for it is called footer two. 
So let's copy this and you can change this name to whatever you want it to be. And then we'll replace this main menu with footer two. And now let's hit save and check out what we have. Going back into our store, let's refresh. And now we can see that we have our footer menu just down here, and then we have our main menu. So it is open right now because we haven't clarified any of the styling for it yet. And it is toggling something, as we can see when we click on it, the header changes, but it's not working yet. So let's go ahead and fix this. Going back inside our application.scss, let's put this just underneath the mini card. I think it makes sense like that. And we can just say over here, start menu drawer. And now for the menu drawer, let's select the class name, menu drawer. And then we'll give this a position of absolute. And then top will be zero and left will be zero and bottom will be zero as well because we want to make sure that it's stretched throughout the whole page and then we'll give it a height of 100 view height and width 100 percent and a z index let's give it 99 so that it's kind of above everything else and then max width we'll give it 350 pixels after that let's give it a background color of white and padding we'll give it the same one as the mini card which is 72 pixels 25 pixels 25 pixels and 25 pixels for all the other sizes sides and now we also need to do a transition here as well so we'll say transition transform 0 0.9 seconds and we give it cubic bezier and we'll choose the first one here if it's not available for you then you can change that to what we have here and then we also want to add another configuration here and say left 0 0.5 seconds and zero seconds and we can also add the phone include so we can say include phone and this will be position fixed and width calc will be 100 view height and 50 pixels and we're going to go over all the phone stylings in a later section but i just want to get this in for now now let's go down a little bit and we can say dot menu drawer dot hidden and we want this to be transform and translate x again and we'll say minus 100 percent so the other one was 100% because we were translating to the right. And now we're saying minus 100% because we're translating to the left. And also inside of our header here, we can actually now remove this comment. And we can see that the menu drawer is just the outside. We now need to, we now need to also style the menu drawer inner. So let's go just down here and we'll say dot menu drawer inner and we'll give it a height of 100% and display flex. And then flex direction, we'll give it column. And then justify content will be space between because we want the two menus to be at the top and at the bottom. So let's save this now and go back to our website. And let's see what happens. All right, perfect. So the menu works well now, but it's hiding the menu button over here. So we need to go ahead and fix that. The menu button has a class name of menu button. So let's save this. And inside of our menu drawer, we can select this class name and we can say Z index to be 999. And now if we save this and 
go back to our website and refresh. The menu button is now staying the same. Perfect. Let's go into the next lecture now where we're going to take care of the footer menu. I'll see you there.